The humanistic theory of teaching believes that we need to see students holistically. This means that it will have a strong focus not only on academics, but also on students' emotional and psychological well-being. Now that's the basics, but there's way more to it. So in this video, we'll look at the four key pillars of humanism, and I'll give you two key strategies for humanist education from famous education theorists Abraham Maslow and Carl Rogers. So let's start with the four key pillars. A humanist educator's teaching strategy will have four philosophical pillars. These pillars will guide the teacher's beliefs and ultimately how they teach. These four pillars are 1. Free will. The humanist perspective emphasizes that we have free choice to do and think what we want. In education, this means we believe students always have the ability to choose to do better each and every day. This core belief will come in handy when we talk about Carl Rogers' unconditional positive regard concept later in this video. The second pillar is that emotions will impact upon a child's learning. This theory believes that we need to be in a positive emotional state to achieve our best. Therefore, teachers need to create a positive, warm and welcoming environment. The third pillar is intrinsic motivation. Humanists argue that we generally have an internal desire to become our best selves, if only we have the chance. And thirdly, humanists believe in the innate goodness of students. Humanists believe that all students are good at the core, yes, even that child who gives you grief every single day. Okay, so we've looked at the four key pillars. Now let's apply them through two concepts. Maslow's Hierarchy of Needs and Rogers' Unconditional Positive Regard. So, let's start with Maslow's Hierarchy. This is a hierarchy that organises human needs into a five-tier pyramid, starting from the most basic physiological needs at the bottom, followed by safety needs, social belonging, esteem and culminating in self-actualisation at the top. The hierarchy suggests that people need to satisfy lower level needs before progressing to higher level ones. In a classroom setting, this means a teacher needs to make sure that basic needs are met in order for optimal learning to occur. A child needs to be well fed, feel safe, feel a sense of community and feel good about themselves in order to be in the right state to learn. And this is the first lesson of humanism in education. Teachers need to focus on ensuring children's needs are met in order for them to feel comfortable and ready to learn. Okay, now let's look at another concept from humanism. It's called unconditional positive regard. Earlier, I said, humanists always think their students are innately good. I also said, teachers think their students have free will. Combining these two pillars of humanism, Rogers created the concept of unconditional positive regard. Originally used in therapy, but now used by educators, this concept is simple. It means teachers must demonstrate to their students that they always think well of their students. So, even if a student misbehaves or does poorly in their exams, the humanist teacher lets their student know that they believe they can achieve great things. Humanists genuinely believe that tomorrow's a new day and the student can come to school and do better tomorrow. In other words, we never set low standards or have low views of our students. OK, so that's humanism in education. But I didn't get to go too deep on Maslow's hierarchy in this video, so I've provided a video on screen right now that will help you understand Maslow's hierarchy in more depth.